Peace and Black Power, welcome to another edition of Baba TV. Every time, fire. Back in the house with Big Brother Blue Pill. I want to start right off with, uh, I was hearing something about the NFL, what owners, the, particularly the ones in Texas, is going Donald Trump on the people. Elaborate a little bit on that, brother. Yes, indeed. Peace, family. Peace to you and yours, brother. Blue Report live and direct. Baba TV fire every time. All right? So we're going to give him this fire. Yeah. As of earlier this morning, all right, today's Friday, um, for those that might be seeing this video, there was an article released. Um, the owner of the Houston Texans made a comment uh, to the regards to saying that he doesn't want the uh, inmates running the prison. Okay, which is tantamount to saying that you don't want the inmates running the asylum. And that's a euphemism that he used to say, look, I'm not going to allow my players, right, to have discretionary rights and make their minds up and think for themselves when it comes to the Kaepernick issue. All right. This also comes at the same time when they said that Kaepernick has been invited to speak to NFL owners and players, okay? Because there is a astronomical decline in the NFL in regards to viewership and attendance for games. So they're getting sandwiched in this controversy, you know what I'm saying? Um, Trump supporters, you know, the majority of which make up the, the designated um, attendees of these particular games, right, Coliseum festivities, they're not going anymore, all right? They also make up a sizable amount of the viewership. I don't know how many Negroes got Nielsen counters in their home, so even if quote-unquote black people stop looking at the NFL, I don't know if it will register or make a sizable impact. So when we see that the numbers are dwindling, dealing with the viewership, more than likely, they're talking about white viewership. You know what I'm saying? So the NFL owners are trying to figure out how do they satisfy both ends of the spectrum? How do they cater right to their players? And how do they cater to their viewership? Of which both have diametrically opposing views of one another at this particular time. Or so they think. Right? Peace, man. So I see... We're seeing some very, very interesting things here, especially as it pertains to Texas, okay? Because like I said, what Trump is doing is he's giving the signal out to the good old boys club. What is the good old boys club? The good old boys club is the billionaire boys club, right? The locker room talk, right? So your locker room is different. You're a player. Your locker room look one way, right? The dudes that play the little peewee, we see what their locker room looked like last week when the, um... You know, the news popped about the classroom in Virginia with the white boys humping on the little black kids, right? Saying that they were giving them locker room treatment. So we know their locker room looks something different. But the owner's locker room, yeah, that shit looks like the good old boys club, a.k.a., you know, the KKK meeting in the country club. There's different, right, in the Mar-a-Lago. So you got the house and you got the field. You got it for white boys, too, okay? You got it for white boys, too. So the white boys in the house... Okay, in the big house, when they have their annual feed meetings and festivities and what have you, they're saying, look, nigga, you're going to be subordinate. You're going to have to sit in the corner with the dunce hat on because your slaves are revolting on your plantation. You got to sit at the lunch table with the uncool kids. We're going to take your cool points. So Trump is talking the big boy clan shit, not the subordinate, you know, low-level sheriff and police department, the white trash. He's not talking that. He's talking to Jeff Session, CIA, okay, top-tier level KKK shit. He's speaking to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, 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 that dragon talk. You feel me? Not the foot soldier, but the dragon talk. So he's telling them, look, if you want to be positioned in this new thing that we're about to structure, then you need to get your slaves in order because you're making all of us look bad. All right? So immediately the good old boys are the first ones to respond. Where are you going to find the good old boys? You're going to find them in Alabama. You're going to find them in Mississippi. You're going to find them in Texas. Well, because we don't have teams from these other uh, 
you know, places that I just named, you know, the Texas owners are the ones that jumped up. So you got the Houston, Texas owner who made the comment earlier this morning. And of course, you got Jerry Jones who said, look, there will be no bucking on my plantation. OK, we done broke you niggas improper. If I hear anything out of you, I'm getting rid of y'all. So he has removed their rights to express themselves, even though he played the game the first week because everybody seemed to have played the game the first week. You know what I'm saying? To appease their base of um, players and, and, and the Negroes who, yeah, the sympath you know, they sympathize to the Negroes for the first week, but then they started getting their response right behind the scenes because we obviously don't be getting the fact that, you know, these niggas must have a whole different um, cable. Oh, no, it's called Fox News. My bad. They don't have a whole different cable news network, but they got a different network about how they feel the pressure in their quote unquote community because their community is not yours. So you got talk radio. Yeah, you got conservative talk radio. You have alt right. Right. You got Bannon on the loose. You got the alt right who is um, comprised of a lot of different media components. YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You have. Yeah. And these foot soldiers. Right. These media arms dealing with alt right and the rest of them. They have billionaire backers, the Mercers of the world. Right. The, the, the Koch brothers of the world and things of that nature. So these are the people that are leveraging the weight and as a response you know some, some of these owners they can't contain themselves any longer you know what i'm saying because they might be high ranking dragons as well so they just coming out straight up like look nigga you know what i'm saying yeah and they cut the dude it was a brother that bucked on the cowboys threw the black fists up they just got rid of him you know what i'm saying so you know they got rid of the brother who is putting up the protests. So what I said, presidential politics has always dealt with nigger containment, domestically, okay? Foreign presidential politics deals with, you know, in the age of the Americas, which is the 19, uh, you know, the 1900s to the 2000, is dealt with containment of the yellow man, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with him and the Russian scare, the red man, you know, not the red man, because they dealt with that shit over here, you know, in the 1800s, right? The Red Scare and things of that nature. So, yeah, and now it's Africa, okay? Of which the um, American Black Ops, right? U.S. Army or the U.S. Military Industrial Complex for that matter is in 53 of the 54 countries, okay? For my black people. You understand? So where you going? You gonna run from Babylon? To go to where Babylon has set up shop at. You understand? So that's a whole nother conversation that we'll have at another time. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to cater to the fake nigga outrage. You know, when our children are populating these militaries to go and occupy the motherland. You dig what I'm saying? Still carrying that label. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got what you got with the NFL. And like I said, I don't really see Negro um, viewership of the NFL declining. So, cat, you know, for all of the Kaepernick and the Kaepernick is doing, he don't even really have the quote unquote black support. You know what I'm saying? And then NFL shut it down. I mean, the NBA shut it down altogether. And niggas ain't protest that. Right? You want to see LeBron run point guard. You wouldn't even think about boycotting the NBA. You don't got it in you. And you don't have a protracted, prolonged ability to boycott or not look at the NFL either. Because that shit was a hashtag for one week. You know what I'm saying? It was a hashtag for one week. And then Trump put you in a remix. And he made sure everybody had to watch now to see, oh, what the Negro is going to do. And then you just kept watching after that. So he's spinning you every which way imaginable. You understand? Because, you know, we lack the ability to think for ourselves and we don't have no leadership. So, you know, you ain't got nobody even telling you how to think anymore. You know what I'm saying? Outside of uh, T.I., Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, Ricky Smiley uh, D.L. Hughley, you know what I'm saying? All comedians 
by the way. Yeah, niggas that make jokes. Yeah, satire on top of real shit. That's your leadership. That's who's giving you your marching orders. That's who gives you your news these days. You understand? So it's a very sad, sad position to see Negroes get, you know, these particular level of chess moves put on them by people that are not qualified chess players to begin with. All right? Again, the backdrop of it all in 2017 is we're having a conversation about owners and their players on the field. That's crazy. All right. Uh, switch gears just a little bit, Blue. Some would say we talk too much and we not building enough. You know, we don't, I don't see no evidence of no building. But until the building, it would seem like to me, you building up, the, we are building up the minds. When people listen to Red Pill, Blue Pill, the various speakers uh, that are on the four different formats, that they're filling up a vacuum up here. You have to fill the vacuum up here up first before you can think about building an edifice or anything and that's why our people really haven't built any too much because we don't we haven't filled this vacuum up up here so it has to be taught by repetition over and over again I think until our people you know get these lessons so that we can build so we can build but and talking is very important I mean talking is key because talking sparks the mental everything that we see and our physical reality started as a thought. So if we're not having thought-provoking conversations, where are the ideas coming from? You know what I'm saying? And I ask people all the time, in order to be free, in order to strive for liberation, you have to know what your liberation looks like. You know what I'm saying? So these have to be tangible thoughts that you're exercising constantly in your mind, you know? And then you have to be able to modify those thoughts just in case certain things don't work out. Case in point, you could be like, look, you know, my idea for liberation was that I wanted to get my thing together so we can leave and move to the Caribbean. I want to go back to the tropics. You know what I'm saying? Well, that would have to have been modified after August because the, the tropics got washed up. You know what I'm saying? So would that be a viable um, destination for your liberation? You know what I'm saying? You probably would have to modify in your mind, well, now I need geodome structures, you know what I'm saying? I need earthquake, earthquake and hurricane proof homes, you know what I'm saying? I can't build out of this anymore. I got to build out of that. So we have to be thinking strategically. We have to be thinking like engineers. In order to reverse the engineering that has been done to us, we need the minds of engineers to get ourselves out of this particular situation. You know what I mean? And then there are certain tangibles that people... They just can't put together certain things. Like, I said it's about our people, and it's true. We're good for a spark, but we can't hold a charge. You understand? We're good for a spark, but we can't hold a charge. Case in point, we can spark the whole conversation about an NFL national protest and blackout NFL. We can spark some things. We got social media, you know what I'm saying? Niggas is expert, um, jabber jaw, jackers and everything, like... You know, we kick up the most dust when it comes to that department, but we can't hold a charge. We have no consistency. You can't see it past three or four weeks. It's going to fall apart. You understand? So, with that being said, the fact that our inconsistencies are dealing with the fact that we can't particularly hold a charge for long enough for anything to take place substantial, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know... As a community, we don't talk about 10-year plans. We don't talk about 20-year plans. Unlike the Asians, we don't talk about 100-year plans. You know what I'm saying? That's dealing with holding a charge. That's dealing with sacrifice. That's dealing with, look, you know, we might put our thing together. We might decide that we got to go back to Africa, and we got to live in the bush for the first two years. Can you sacrifice? Can you do that? You know what I'm saying? Do you have a vision that will allow you to say, look, it's going to be so promising in year five that through year two or year three, I could deal with the discomfort. 
right? I had interviewed RZA in like 2006. And RZA was telling me initially when he got the Wu-Tang Clan together, he had a five-year plan. You know what I'm saying? He had a five-year plan. They would have to endure at least three years of discomfort, right, before the fruits were able to kick in, the tangible amounts of fruits were able to kick in where they could say what we call, let's say, quote-unquote, balling out. You know what I'm saying? Prior to that, everybody that got contracts had to put their money into the pot. Everybody had to pour into that same pot. There had to be equity, um, equality amongst the whole unit. There had to be um, willful discomfort in order to feel that level of comfort. You know what I'm saying? And it all fell to pieces when they seen ODB get the bag. And then they got in their feelings. And then, you know, people stopped. You know, they started breaking rank and saying, well, I don't want to listen to that plan anymore. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then the whole shit fell apart. You understand? So, and Riz is showing them. You know what I'm saying? You got platinum plaques. Everybody got their own contract. They breaking. They they making history. They doing things that you know are diametrically different from playing the project bench a year ago. You know what I'm saying? They breaking through, but they still couldn't hold the charge. Yes, Blue. I think that sometimes we get at this quote unquote high level of information as individuals and some of us as teachers get fed up or impatient with the slow progress of the people and forget that you even though you might be at a certain level you have to have patience and move with the progress of the people talk about how important it is to be humble in that regard and move with the progress of the people well Again, you know, especially in matters of liberation, where are you going without the people? You know what I'm saying? So it's incumbent that you you have to wait on the people. You have to be patient with the people. You know what I'm saying? Slumber is something that, uh, you know, it takes a sizable amount of time for somebody to wake up, shake off the sleep, get the sleep out their eye. You know what I'm saying? Get freshened up you know, and get acclimated to what the sunlight feels like enough where they want to keep their eyes open. It's a process. And like anything else that deals with addiction, you know what I'm saying, you can easily relapse and fall back into slumber. You know what I'm saying? Because people are addicted to that sleep state. You know what I'm saying? It's comforting. Um, ignorance is bliss. You know what I'm saying? All of these things. So if you want to be available for the people, I wouldn't even call it a quote-unquote leader, but if you want to be available to the people, for the people in any regards, you have to be very patient with the people because the people are moving on their own time. They're moving on their own clock. You know what I'm saying? But um, in these times, though, you got to be diligent. You know what I'm saying? Because they're trying to clamp down on consciousness. They're trying to criminalize consciousness. You know what I'm saying? They want to put people on kill lists for waking you up. You know, I don't even know how other way to explain it, but give it to you like that. You know what I'm saying? They want to kill niggas dead in the streets, okay, for waking you up, all right? For shaking their sheeple up, okay? They want people to pay with their lives. So a lot of us don't have the, uh, the comfort anymore, you know what I'm saying? If you taking your precious time, you know what I mean? And you sniffing up and snorting consciousness on the weekends, but, you know, every other day of the week, you want to be Negrofied. You know what I'm saying? It's no longer going to be, um, you know, the onus is on the people at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to carry the weight, you know? Because I know people that already went underground, like, they good, they finished. They're like, look, we done said everything that needs to be said and there's nothing left. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, yes, the people are going to have to be very diligent about what it is. You know, I don't even know if the people know what they want at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Is it information to do what with? You know what I'm saying? Just to say that you got it, to say that you're smart. Is it information that you want to move out on? You know what I mean? Like, people that feel threatened have a tendency to move irregardless. 
of them having the information or not. They have an impetus to move and they make that move. How much studying you gonna do? You understand? So, we gotta know what we want, you know what I mean? And the sooner that we know what we want, then we're gonna start materializing and magnetizing the things to us that are necessary for us to achieve those goals. We have to have short-term goals, we have to have long-term goals. We have to think about our lives in, 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 in the terms of a business, you know what I'm saying? And being that there are not too many people in this community to practice the best business, there's not too many people in this community that can manage lives the best. You understand? Or the movement of bodies of lives. You know what I'm saying? Substantial amounts and bodies of lives. I just told you, America or the U.S. military is in 53 of the 54 African countries. Where are you going to go? Huh? If your thing is, look, I got to get away from Babylon. I don't want to be under the scope or the heel of my oppressor. Where are you going to go? Hmm? There's a young brother in these streets, uh, you know, who used to populate these streets. He was on a side of his couch named Nature Boy, you know. He tried to get up and go to Costa Rica. We seen what just happened with that. They packed his ass up and sent him back. They wouldn't even let him on a plane yesterday because they said he smelled so nasty. You know what I'm saying? So him and all of the people, his acolytes, the people that came following his information and his message, he got everybody wrapped up. You know what I mean? So where are people going to go? You know what I'm saying? Where is there a safe haven? Right? So, we got to think about this. We got to think about this. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be real with ourselves. You know what I mean? And chances are, your individual liberation is going to come solely from yourself. You know what I mean? You got to figure this thing out. You got all the information that you need. Anything after that, we're just like, it's an inundation. It's, it's, it's just, you know, too much information could be at a detriment. You know what I'm saying? You're buried under information at this time. You're going to have to exert all sort of energy to, 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 to dig yourself from information piles that are on you. It's information landslides that are covering folk now. Okay? It's a deluge of information. You've been flooded like Texas. You understand? I know people that have been able to do more with less. Real talk. So, has this information age? Has it cut out to be everything that it needs to be? There are more people that are studying and theorizing and talking than there was before. I remember they used to come out here and kick ass. Then we could talk about all this information. Right? But... The Khalids of the world, they got to their business. They got to the bottom of things. You know what I'm saying? They put boots on ground. You know? They shook shit up. They was a presence. You know? So they wasn't only on camera talking because, you know, we have the archive footage of our beloved brother now that we can sit back and, and get that energy from. You know what I'm saying? And, and just theorize what it must feel like to be in charge of your own self where you can stand up. But the brother actually got out here and stood up too. That's that part, you know what I'm saying? That part that we, we seem to forget, you know? And he mobilized, he was there for his people. He put on events, you know what I'm saying? He stared in the face of this devil, you understand? And sometimes you gotta challenge yourself. You gotta put yourself in a line of fire to know that you bulletproof. You have to, otherwise it's just a theory. You know what I'm saying? You gotta prove it to yourself. So, yeah, man, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot that needs to be done, you know, um, studying and reading and researching and compiling data and information, like, you know, a lot of that has already been done, but for the newbies, because there's a lot of people that's just coming into this information, I can't exclude you from that. Yeah, I need you to study, you know what I'm saying? I need you to study psychology. So you can look at individuals and stop being so easily fooled by the charlatans. You have to know, you know, the basic inclinations of how people think and what makes them do the things that they do. So you can figure these things out on your own. So when we're not around to do it for you no more, you can be on top of things. All right. And stop getting pushed back 5, 10 and 15 years backwards by people that come along because they want to advance themselves a year or two ahead of the game. Because they ain't getting away with nothing. 
They not going into the future with it. You understand? They're just biding themselves some extra minutes on the clock. And as a result, you 15 years behind now. Because a million dollars has been defrauded out of the community. You know? So, that's what I would tell people. You know, change the things that you're studying. Everybody ain't got to be studying the same thing. You know, nobody in this community is still growing food for themselves. Right? Nobody's still using container homes and making, you know, affordable housing out of them. Right? Nobody's using hemp to make clothing yet. So the basics have not been addressed with all this information. Food, clothing, and shelter have not been addressed. You know what I'm saying? All that other shit is extra. You're supposed to be able to study that and dive into that when the basics is already dealt with. We're not dealing with the basics, family. And we're seeing in times of national tragedy and emergency, the only thing to count are the basic foundational principles. Food, clothing, and shelter. All that extra shit gets washed away. You know what I'm saying? You got a thousand books. Okay. Okay. You know? That shit is under 13 feet of water. What you gonna do with that? It don't mean nothing at the end of the day. It's cute. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay to acquire. But had the basics figured out first. Foundational principles come first. All right? Not only during times of su survival, but when we're talking about, you know, putting something in place where we can thrive and especially leave something to these children just in case something happened to us. All right? 